Anchors up, sell it full. Welcome to the Sloopcast. How are you doing today, Kyle? Doing pretty well, Jared. How are you doing today? Uh, I, you know, it's, uh, I did a lot this weekend. I'm a little tired. If I'm, if I'm being real with you, I'm, being, I'm a little tired. Um, but that's okay. Uh, we have had, and we've, we've talked about it in little bits and chunks through like either the very beginning or very end of our wasteland episodes and ask Sloopcast episodes that we've been doing this month. So we've kind of touched on some of these things, but we decided to do an entire episode of it. That's right. We're doing recruiting. We're doing recruiting. Ohio state had a, an eventful June and July. Uh, of course we're just starting in July, but some big gets, some what might look like some big misses, but before I forget, it's a new tradition, but it's a good tradition. I get more on my monitor than I get in my mouth sometimes. But uh, I don't know. You want to you want to get right into the mock, or do you want to talk about you want to talk about like the new guys as they come up, or do you just want to talk about the the new commitments since June? How do you want to organize things, Kyle? Yeah, let's- Let's actually just talk about the new guys. Okay. The new guys since since June 1st. Since June 1st. Even though it's been a hot summer so far, mm-hmm, the mm-hmm. Buckeyes recruiting is even hotter right now. 11, 11 commits since June 1st, Jared. 11. Yeah, yeah. 11. And, and how many of those? Let me just scroll down real quick here. One, two... So nine, nine commits in the month of June, and we have two already, uh, two big ones already in July that we will we'll get to as well. So let's let's just start in the order of when when they came in here. So let's start off with a great name, great name uh, of a um, in the running back position here. Uh, It's it's a lofty Uh, name. It's a lofty name from Cleveland, Ohio. Yeah, yeah. Bo Jackson. Yeah, that's his name. (laughs) <laughs> Bo Jackson. Uh, then not long after that, only a few days, they brought in safety Fahim Delane. Uh, he is from the uh, Maryland area. Um, good counsel, which I I think Ohio State's got a guy or two out of good counsel before, if memory is serving me correctly. Um, then staying on the East Coast, uh, New Jersey wide receiver Quincy Porter committed on June 14th. Yep, and then shortly, shortly after that, uh, out of the Philadelphia area, uh, Isaiah West, uh, not not highly, not highly rated currently right now, but obviously Depends Ohio State has, uh, yeah, Ohio State has their has their eye on them and um, really really liked what they see from Isaiah West here, but sure, like from the Bo end, Jackson is like a consensus top, like one twenty five guy. Uh, Fahim Delane's a consensus, near consensus top 50 guy. Uh, on three has him at 88 overall. Quincy Porter, consensus top 100 guy, although on three likes him a lot more than the other ones. They have him at 31st overall. Isaiah West, we got a bigger swing here. If we just, just look at the running backs, Rivals doesn't even have him ranked. ESPN has him as the 33rd best running back on three has him as the 30th best best running back. However, 24 seven sports have him as the 14th overall best running back um, to scale that to Bo. Well, is uh, Bo's listed as an athlete for the position ranking. So we can't compare that. Um, I, I, you know, we, I trust the coaching staff. I think the coaching staff had the opportunity to get other more highly ranked guys and they took the commitment from Isaiah West. I trust the coaching staff on this one. Yeah. And then a few days later, uh, Odpin Miller out of Mansfield, uh, Mm -hmm. wide receiver also coming over to Ohio state. Six, four. Yeah. Big guy, big lengthy guy. Ohio state has brought in, um, both in committing and also just through uh, a lot of the guys who've had visit, they've, they've been bringing in a lot of smaller guys as well. 
but then you know it's 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 nice to add some of those big bodies in there to complement. Then we have Jake Cook out of uh, Westerville, out of Westerville North, right in the backyard there. Yep, yep. And then had uh, Zion Grady, one of one of top hundred uh, player. Um, edge rusher out of the state of Alabama. I know Jared and I mentioned about kid. getting a kid out of getting a kid out of Alabama is tough. Yeah. And so this would be a big get if Ohio State can continue if Zion Grady eventually does uh, sign that LOI to Ohio State. Yeah, and we'll talk we'll talk about this later. There might be a third, maybe even a fourth Alabama player. Crazy would that be? Yeah. Although, we'll go back, go and back. again, we'll get back to this later in the show. Alabama got their revenge a bit too, so we'll we'll see how that plays out. Yeah, but going back back home to uh, backyard of Cleveland here, uh, Brody Lennon, uh, tight end, uh, commits towards the end of June, and then the day after that, we have we have um, Odom, uh, Trey and Odom out of um, Matthews, North Carolina, uh, defensive lineman commits uh, towards the end of June as well. Yeah, um, Odom, uh, almost certainly an interior guy. Um, On three likes him a bit more than the other services for whatever reason. Uh, But, you know, on three has him as a very solid four star player. ESPN does have him as a four star, but I wouldn't call him a solid four star. The other uh, two services have him as a three. Um, I n- don't care. Just just for the record, yep. I I think uh, Odom's a great pickup. So so those were the nine. Those were the nine for the month of June, and then the two that we mentioned uh, previously here. Oh, actually, just one mentioned last week. Uh, Maxwell Roy out of uh, New Jersey, another kid out of New Jersey, making his verbal commit to Ohio State, uh, defensive lineman. And just yesterday or Saturday, we had, we had a big boom, big, big boom here in our, in our linebacking crew here, in our linebacking department here. Riley, Petty John? Petty John. Out of Texas, out of Texas, one of one of the best linebackers in this recruiting class, uh, the the uh, on three has um, has him thirty third overall in the industrial, or excuse me, in the ind- industry rankings here, and the number two linebacker in the country. Yeah, um, Ohio State has two top five linebackers in this class right now, which is not something they have done in a very, very long time. Um, I don't know if they've ever. Laurinaitis, the new heart line, question mark? He's the defensive <laughs> heart line. It, it does look like that, although OG Walton got might a, have something to say about that. He's got himself a five-star and a four-star linebacker now. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, so, oh, and by the way, just real quick, Maxwell Roy is originally from New Jersey, but he is also currently playing football in Pennsylvania. Uh, he's going to St. Joseph's, which uh, in Philadelphia, which is uh, where, of course, uh, Marvin Harrison Jr. played in high school. All right, Kyle, let's get to the mock. Let me switch screens. Now, let me zoom in one. There we go. That's better. Line that up a little bit better. All right. Kyle, let's start with the quarterback position. Uh, Davian St. Clair, still in the class, not going anywhere. Class leader. Uh, I don't have any quarterback. If, if, If you've never watched one of our mock classes before, um, everyone above the line is in the mock. Everyone below the line is someone who we should keep an eye on. Yep, yep. 
So let's move on to the running backs. I currently have Bo Jackson and Isaiah West, and that's it. I I think Ohio Ohio State needs a third running back. It's not clear as of right now if that third running back will be a freshman or a transfer. We we can and should see Ohio State at a third running back at some point. I just don't like I said, I just don't know if that's going to be a. A graduating high school kid or someone transferring in from a different school. Uh, right now, I'm going to leave it as just Jackson and West in the class. Some guys to keep an eye on. Mills Knight out of Tennessee. Marquise Davis is a um, Ohio kid, but he has been committed elsewhere for a while now. Uh, and then, Kyle, I, I promised you two additional Alabama names to go with uh-huh. the to go with the two guys who are already committed in the class. Anthony Rogers running back from Alabama. I, I don't I'm not. I'm not saying it's likely. I'm just saying keep an eye on him. I don't have him right. in the mock. I could have put him in the mock. I didn't put him in the mock. Any thoughts? Or are we ready to move on to the wide receivers? Yeah, I agree. I think I think there will be a third running back here. Uh, but yeah, it's it is pretty open. It is pretty open right now. So. Yeah, let's let's move on to the wide receivers here. Yeah, and uh, we had in previous mocks uh, Jordan Davis in there uh, out of uh, California. Ohio State walked away, and I'm going to leave it at that. Wide receivers. Desi Jones been in for a while. Bodpin Miller, someone uh, Kyle uh, talked about a little bit ago. Got Quincy Porter in the class. I do think this is a four wide receiver class. Um, I put Philip Bell in there. Uh, Philip Bell is a kid out of California. I think it's he's he's currently my favorite to to take that fourth spot. There are some things to keep an eye on. Uh, uh, you got Preston Bowman. Preston Bowman. Um, is a is a wide receiver out of the state of Ohio, um, kind of an under the radar kid in the same way Bodpin Miller was. That's probably if I if I weren't going to put Philip Bell in, if we get news after we record this that uh, Philip Bell is actually super duper leaning and almost certainly going to go to other school, I'd probably move Preston Bowman in to replace him. A couple other guys to keep an eye on. Uh, both of these guys out of the state of Texas, Dylan McCutcheon and Braden Robinson. Yeah, pretty, pretty solid class um, so far here. So, yeah, I, I, I agree with, with Jared here. I think this is going to be a four wide receiver class here. I don't, I don't think Ohio State would get a get a fifth one in here. Yeah, and. I'm not going to I'm not going to name names because I've only heard this. Ru- I, I haven't heard this rumor from anyone I trust. So not going to name names, not going to start anything. There's a potential that the fourth spot goes to a reclassify. I'm just going to leave that at that. It, it, it could be right. a 2026 kid reclassifying the 2025 who ends up taking that spot. No names but it's possible. All right. And tight ends, Jared, tight ends. Um, <laughs> two, two, we got two, got two already. Nate Roberts and, uh, Brody Lennon are, yeah. uh, are the two commits for Ohio state here. Yeah. They're, they're looked for a long time. Like Luca Gilbert out of the state of Ohio, a pretty big miss, honestly, as far as an in-state kid goes, um, Mm-hmm. And Brock shot out of Indiana, a, a state you want to be like the lead recruiting team in, quite frankly, if you're Ohio State. Um, didn't get Luca Gilbert or Brock shot. 
I, I don't ever consider a Miami recruiting class to be all that solid, if we're being honest. So it is possible that we see one of those guys get back into this. It is possible uh, potentially that Landon Paces, who is the son of Orlando Pace, we see his name pop into conversations in case one of the other guys decommit in case Ohio state decides they want to take on a third tight end. But for right now, we're going to leave it at Nate Roberts and Brody Lennon. All right. Now the, the slobs, Jared, the slobs. So the, already the, the Achilles heel, I'll say for the, for Ohio the, state. especially the tackle, the tackle position here for Ohio, for Ohio state, state recruiting. recruiting. Yeah, absolutely. It absolutely is. Um, already in the class, Carter Lowe, who is one of the best tackles in the country. Yep. Uh, thank God he is in Ohio. He's in the class. He's locked into the class. We feel, you know, Carter Lowe is not going anywhere. No. Jake Cook, another Ohio kid brought in. Um, we talked about him a little bit earlier. Um, he's out of Westerville. Uh, you know, if you just look at his recruiting rankings, it's nothing crazy. Unless, of course, you look at the rival recruiting rankings because they like him a lot more than the other services do for whatever reason. Um, but he's definitely an interior guy. He's not someone who's going to be playing tackle. He is an interior guy. He's 6'5", 305 already. I, I like bringing in Jake Cook absolutely 100%. I know sometimes people get discouraged by recruiting stars and whatnot, but... I think this is a solid ad for Ohio State. Yep. Now, I think they add two more. They have a tackle in the class. They have a guard I in agree. the class. So I think we add two and more. And they are, they're, they're looking at the, the diamond in the rough here, Jared. Right, uh, I think the, he's, I think he's just a diamond. I, I think he's yep. on display. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, he is, he is <laughs> the diamond. Yep. He is the diamond that Ohio State is wanting to pull in here david david, david saunders jr out of charlotte yeah who, um, who, who by the way just just before we hit the record button here makes his announcement that he is going to make his commitment on august 17th and if you haven't if you haven't been listening to us um for a while we've been saying we we said it many many times that when somebody makes their commitment uh, date. They, they've already made their decision. Typically. On where they're going. Oh, oh yeah. Pretty, pretty typically true. Um, I like Ohio State here. I, it's, I'm not going to call it a lock. I'm not yeah, going to say he's absolutely coming. I heard that thing it's here and, and he released the top four, but I hear it's two. Yeah. Yeah, he makes his top four, which was really interesting. It was Tennessee, Georgia, Ohio State, and not Clemson, but Nebraska. Yeah, and we had all heard, uh, you know, I think for a while now we were hearing four-person or four-team race, uh, but apparently Clemson has fallen out of the top four. So, you hate to see it. You hate to see it. You hate to see it. Uh, I, I don't think Nebraska is a contender. Um, I, you know, don't rule out Georgia. They're king of the mountain right now. Don't rule them out. But I do think this is between Ohio State and Tennessee. Yep. And I do think that it's Ohio State. I I've been feeling good about this one for a while. And, and I, and I say that as someone who very early on dismissed this, like we're not getting David Sanders. We're not getting David Sanders. We're not getting David Sanders. We're not, we're not going to get him guys. We never get these guys. We're not going to get them. Um, I, and I don't, I don't know how much of that was, Analysis versus me protecting myself, like just not getting excited about another, 
you know, big out of state offensive tackle that we just would end up not getting. But eventually I started letting myself believe it. And I, I really took a hard pessimistic stance on David Sanders ending up in this class for a long time. And I eventually added him into the mock. He is still in the mock. Um, I also have Javon McFadden in here as the second interior guy. Some other names to watch. Ohio kid Nolan Davenport, a Georgia kid, Andrew Stargle. Um, I, I think Davenport or potentially uh, Jermail Atkins, who is another offensive tackle Ohio kid. If things go bad with Sanders, look for Ohio State to go the way of Davenport or Atkins. If things go whether Ohio State side or McFadden side, if things go bad with with McFadden, look potentially for them to talk to Andrew Stargle out of Georgia. Um, I still have Douglas Utu on the list. Um, I maybe should have taken him off, but I left him. Uh, he's he's the least likely of all of the uh, eight offensive linemen currently on the screen he's he's going to be the least likely i think but I, I think if if ohio state gets mcfadden and sanders i think that's the class i i think i think that's the class kyle any thoughts on offensive linemen or the offense in general yeah they, they gotta land sanders they they yeah. got it. I know. I know that you mentioned. Oh, they look for Davenport or, or uh, I know, or or some others here. It's I know. No, no offense, but they are. They are, they I know. are not. <laughs> I know. I. It's. I. I don't think they have right now a good relationship with an offensive tackle, who isn't either, David Sanders or from the state of Ohio. I don't I don't know who the backup plan is. If it's. You know what I mean? I, it, there's not another David Sanders out there. Not this not this class for Ohio State. Uh, there are obviously other very talented offensive tackles out there, but Ohio State's not in on those battles. Some of those guys are locked down and locked in. And some of those guys Ohio State never had a relationship with and. It's it's all or nothing on David Sanders right now. And, and I say that with all due respect to Nolan Davenport and Jermail Adkins, because quite frankly, I wouldn't mind if Ohio State, if the numbers and the math lined up correctly, that they brought in one of those guys as a fifth guy. I, I think they have really nice potential. So no disrespect to them. But there's a pretty obvious drop off from Sanders to those guys. All right, cool. Um, before we head on to the defensive side, we're going to stick a quick uh, ad break here. If you want to skip out on the ads here, uh, head on over to our Patreon, uh, sloopcast. Uh, the sloopcast. Get that backwards. The sloopcast. Thank you. The Sloopcast, not Patreon. Dot. No, it's Patreon. The Sloopcast. Patreon. The Sloopcast. Dot com. Wow, I'm so out of it. <laughs> Patreon. The Sloopcast. Dot com. Uh, find out all. Find out everything in there. It has some um, some great information. Uh, great great people in there. But become a Patreon and to skip the ads here, and we'll uh, yeah, we'll be be right back. All right, Kyle, we are back and we're back and we're on the defensive side of the ball now. I almost almost feel like it's a. The defensive side's almost solidified. I think they have almost everybody that they want to fill out here. Yeah, I mean, if you look at the offensive side. 
Philip Bell, David Sanders, and Javen McFadden were the only guys we talked about, you know, as far as being in the mock, were the only guys we talked about who weren't already committed. And as far as that goes, I'm not, I don't see on the offensive side, I don't see any like huge threats for uh, flips for, for, I think the offensive side might not look as solidified as the defensive side, but I think there's a little bit more flip potential losing some guys who you could, you know, maybe losing some committed guys on the defensive side. I think there's a couple names to watch there to keep an eye on. All right, Kyle, you ready? Yes, sir. Let's let's start with the defensive ends here. Yeah. Um, at the edge position, we have Zaheer Mathis from the state of Pennsylvania. We have London Merritt, uh, who is a uh, Georgia, Florida player. And Zion Grady, uh, who is, uh, we talked about at the beginning of the show, uh, an Alabama edge rusher. Now, Alabama got their revenge, however. And I'm keeping Justin Hill on the watch list. But Alabama came into the into the Queen City, and no, I don't mean Charlotte, came into Cincinnati and stole Justin Hill. They did, yeah. Uh, and someone asked me the morning Justin Hill was committing. He, he was going to commit that afternoon. Someone asked me, what are our chances? I go, I'd be shocked if it's not Ohio State. And then a little bit later, we started getting those RPMs coming and coming in saying he was going to Alabama. Now, as far as, you know, edge rushers go, and I don't think Ohio State would mind getting a fourth one, obviously. But as far as edge rushers go, um, these three are a great class. These three are a tremendous class. You are happy with these three edge rushers. You do not need to add a fourth. Would they have added a fourth if that fourth guy was Justin Hill? Absolutely, they would have. Yeah. 100%. It's, it, it, you know, sometimes people like to, oh, well, he didn't come here because of the, he didn't because of that. Ohio State wanted him. Didn't get him. It happens. Yep. Um. One thing you, uh, I am going to put Zaheer Mathis on a bit of a flip watch. Um, there might be some concerns there. Uh, I'm not going to say it's a serious watch. I'm not trying to, you know, I'm not trying to concern anyone. But what losing Justin, one of the things that losing Justin Hill to Alabama does is it really hurts Ohio State if they end up also losing Zaheer Mathis. Now, Merritt and Grady are still a great edge rushing duo to to get out of this class, but Ohio State only got one defensive end in the 2024 class. They they need bodies here. And I, I do think that there is a possibility that they add a fourth defensive end or a fourth edge rusher at some point. But as of right now, I, I, I don't necessarily have like a, an immediate prospect for that. So for right now, we're just going to look at these three. We're going to keep an eye on Justin Hill, just in case something changes there. Yep. Yep. Defensive tackle. Uh, yes. well, first off, that's wrong. I have Brandon Caesar as red. He is not committed. No, I was, I was about, I was about like, wait a minute. Is, did that that's, just happen? <laughs> that's, that is my mistake. No, I just colored him red. And anyway, uh, sometimes you go to color one of the things red and then you end up turning the entire text block red instead by accident. That's, that's what happened there. Uh, we talked yeah. about Odom and Roy who their recent commits to the defensive tackle class Brandon Caesar's a kid out of Cleveland who I think um, who, who I've had in the mock for a long time. Um, 
and I, I do still really like his his chances of joining the class. But someone you have to keep there's there's two people you need to keep an eye out for. And even though if you're looking at the screen, if you're watching this on YouTube, you see Darian Smith and Jaquez Carter on there. I'm not talking about either of them. I am talking about Malik Autry, who, Kyle, I told you I was going to name four Alabama players. Two, two additional Alabama players on top of the two who are already committed in the class. Malik Autry. Ohio State had basically no chance of getting Malik Autry out of Alabama until they signed Zion Grady. I think that provides a little bit of comfort for Malik Autry to move all the way to Ohio. Um, I don't think Ohio State was really in the Malik Autry conversation until they signed Zion or got a commitment rather from Zion Grady. But with Zion Grady now in the fold, I think Malik Autry is a very realistic option. No, I, 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 said, I don't know. I, good. I was to say I, I I just don't know because he's yeah I know he he's been committed for to Auburn for quite a while now, right. but and yet he's taking visits. I mean I would I would too I, I would too. We've had that conversation. I know. Yeah. All right, yeah. linebackers. Hold on. I'm not I'm not done oh, yet. Yeah. I said I said there were two names to watch. I only gave you Malik Audrey. Mm -hmm. You know who that you, and the other guy's name is not currently on the board. You know why he's not currently on the board. Why is that, Jared? Because he's not technically in the 2025 class at this time. I'm not going to put him on the board until he enters the 2025 class. I'm talking about a 2026 defensive tackle by the name of Jakeem Stewart out of Louisiana. Um, he is at this time in the 2026 class. There is conversations of reclassifying. He is a beast. All right. He He is... He goes by the nickname Thanos. He he is a monster. Um, would be an enormous get for Ohio State, an absolutely enormous get for Ohio State, and I I really like Ohio State's chances, especially if he reclassifies. If he does reclassify, I really like Ohio State's chances, but. I'm not putting him on the board until he reclassifies. These are 2025 names over here. 2025 names. As long as he's 2026, I'm not putting him on the board. But, but keep an eye, keep an ear on Jakeem Stewart, defensive tackle out of Louisiana. All right. All right. Linebackers, Jared. Lauren Itis, Lauren is out here recruiting. Yeah. Uh, two top five linebackers, depending on the services you look at. Uh, you got Eli Lee from the state of Ohio. You have TJ Alford from the state of Florida. And you got Riley Pettijohn, um from the state of Texas. Uh, Alfred and Pettijohn are elite ranked guys. Eli Lee, I think, is totally underrated. Um but, he, you know, he's an Ohio kid, one of the earliest commitments to this class. Love Eli yeah. Lee. Um, but, you know. Laurenitis showing off what he can do by bringing in TJ Alford and, and Riley Pettijohn. Now, I think Texas is going to have a really good year this year. And, you know, they were one of the other. Of course, USC was also involved. But. You know, Texas was also super involved in this in this recruitment. I'm if if the Longhorns have a great year this year, just you know, hope that you keep Pettijohn in the class. You've got him yep. now; you have to keep him. Yep, yep. And that that's going to be a, a pretty big challenge, I think. Now, 
we're going to look at some other linebackers. Um, Elijah Melendez, Matt Inferiamo. I, I include these guys in the graphic as a just in case. Um, I, I, this is the linebacker who, as long as Ohio state keeps this linebacker class in place, this is the linebacker class. It's these three guys. As Kyle said, this defensive class is getting pretty close to just being wrapped up. Right now we're getting, you know, it's, you know, make sure to keep Zahir Mathis, Zahir Mathis in the class and defensive ends probably wrapped up unless a fourth name comes off the top rope that I'm not expecting or, you know, you convince Justin Hill that he made a mistake and you convince him to stay in Ohio. Those three guys are probably your class. If Mathis is able to take care of his, his business and does in fact come to Ohio state defensive tackle. Yeah. I do think there's going to be a third defensive tackle, maybe even four defensive tackles, depending upon who those guys are. Um, I, you, the fourth guy would have to be special in order to make that fourth guy happen. Jakeem Stewart is that kind of special. They'll take four defensive tackles if the fourth one's Jakeem Stewart. But I, I think Lee Alford and Pettijohn are your linebackers. As long as yeah. they stay in the class, these are your linebackers. Yep, yep. All right, defensive backs here. Uh, Let's do corners first. Yep, interesting here on the corners. Yeah, we got Sanchez and and Offord in here. That's our fourth now, Alabama player, and Naeem Offord. Um, Devin Sanchez, also have, a five star from the state of Texas. Um, that being said, I have no concerns about Sanchez flipping. He's solid. He's in the class. He's a leader in the class. Mm -hmm. Offered. I'm more concerned about. Keeping offered in the class might prove to be difficult. That being said, now that he's one of two, maybe one of three, if you can get Autry to sign, if you know, get him to flip away from Auburn. Now he's one of three Alabama kids in the class. It might really help to solidify Offord's role in the class. Um, but I'm going to be watching Offord until National Signing Day. Like, maybe that's just pure pessimism on my part, but I'm going to be watching Offord until he signs. And Kyla, as the third quarterback in this mock, I have Trey McNutt. That being said, yeah, our confidence is waning. Very, very. Yes, it's going down and down as as each day passes by. Here, it just at, at one point it seemed just a sure thing that he's going to stay stay in the state of Ohio, playing for the Buckeyes here. But it's it seemed like he's he's heading on over to trending. Yeah on over to Oregon right now. There's a trend. I the longer this goes the better. I'll say that. I'll say the longer this goes the better. You know, we we don't want him to commit soon. And I don't think he's going to. I I I think there's a lot of time left in in the recruitment of Trey McNutt. Um, you know, mm -hmm. I know, I know anytime Will Fong drops a, an RPM and I'm as guilty of this as anyone else, whenever Will Fong drops an RPM, people are like, well, that's over. McNutt's going to Oregon. It's over everyone. McNutt's going to Oregon. And I'm as guilty as anyone else when that happens. I am not, I'm not judging. Yep. yep. But let's not forget that Will Fong uh, put in an RPM for Justin Hill to Ohio State. Tossing that out there. Everyone's wrong. Everyone's wrong sometimes. 
Um, the, Dorian the other Brew. The, the other top flight defensive back um, with ties to Ohio. Uh, Dorian Brew, of course. Uh, not currently in Ohio, but he ha- does have strong ties to the state of Ohio. Committed to Oregon. He did. That's not great. Um, you know, maybe he and Trey are teaming up. I, you know, I don't, I don't think I ever really heard that they were, you know, like a package or anything like that. Um, but yeah, it, you know, Dorian Brew committing to Oregon is unideal. I think that was a guy we were all counting on and hoping on to join the Ohio State class, and he and he hasn't. And part of the problem here is, is that I don't know who, you know, if you get Sanchez and you get offered, that's great. They're two of the best in the country. They're top five cornerbacks in the class. But as I talked about, I'm very concerned about keeping offered in the class. So what happens if you don't get Trey McNutt, you don't get Dorian Brew, and you don't get offered what was once what once looked like a slam dunk cornerback class can fall apart very quickly. Yes. Yes. And that's my concern right now. And and I, I, again, I don't think Sanchez is going anywhere. You know, he's a five star from Texas that doesn't necessarily scream solid, but he, he seems very, very solid in his commitment to Ohio state. He is a leader for the recruiting class. Absolutely, hundred percent to feel fine about him, but I, I, I don't know who the backups are. I, I don't have. I don't, I don't, I don't know who yeah, the other. A, I don't know who the other corners are. Like these are the four guys. Yeah, yeah that's that's a. Yeah, that that is a that is a big big concern here. I, you, you got if I'm a house right now, you got you got to put your chips on. On on Saunders and on McNutt to figure out what's going on with, with McNutt there. Because if, if you, if McNutt does go to Oregon there, you got, you got two of your top five and, th- and this is a really, really good recruiting class for, uh, for kids in the state of Ohio. And you're going yeah. to get two of those five going, going outside of the state here. That's, that's a, a, that's a big whiff in my in my mind uh, for for this Ohio State team or recruiting. Uh, yeah, recruit, I mean, uh, recru- recruiting department. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, it's a big it's, whiff it's, it's, on Justin Hill. I know, and it, but this recruiting class also has the chance to be historically great. So it's a little hard for me to say that the entire class is a whiff. Because it's not no, like I'm, this I'm class not is that. Not, not saying that, but you 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 have five. You have five. Currently, you have five uh, athletes here in the top one hundred from the state of Ohio. From the state of Ohio, and you can and you and you're just over five hundred on 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 those five. And you're not even counting Dorian Brew in that, who, again, living no, in Texas, but was living in Ohio. He's, he's showing up as Texas on your on the on whatever resource you're looking at. But he's very, very strong Ohio ties. Um, yeah, it's not great. If if I, I don't think the Dorian Brew story is over for what it's worth. I think Ohio State's going to keep trying there, um, and I and I don't think people should be giving up on Trey McNutt either. Mm-hmm. And quite frankly, Justin Hill. I don't think people should be giving up on Justin Hill. Ohio State's going to keep trying to get those guys. We'll see what happens. Yeah, hope we'll see. Hope Moving see. on to safety. Safety feels a little more safe. I guess a little more complete. Um, you got Fahim Delane, Cody Haddad, Deshaun Stewart, 
I feel good about all these guys, especially Delane and Haddad. Um, I don't think they're going anywhere. If anything does happen, I think Messiah DeLome is a guy who is out there, not in the class. Uh, I don't think that they take him as a fourth guy. But if one of the other three guys gets cold feet, misses out on the class, you know, decides not to sign. They have a decent enough relationship with Messiah DeLome that I think a a move can be made there. It was funny. At one point, we looked at the defensive backs and it was just like, we got too many of them. There's too many guys who want to come play defensive back at Ohio State. And then you remove oh. McNutt and Brew from that conversation and all of a sudden it starts to get a lot more squirrely. Yeah, how, how things have quickly changed. Yeah. So so with what what you have here, Jared. Yeah. I'll say currently has 23 and based on like what you have in your, in your projection here, three more added onto the offensive line, two more on the uh, defensive. No, only, so you're looking at it. Oh, on the offensive side. Excuse me. I thought you said offensive line. My fault. Nope. Three on the offensive side, two on the defensive side, five more, a 28 class. Yeah, I think that's, Totally feasible. I would say that's totally uh, Kyle. High State's going to lose a ton of players this year. Oh yeah, I know they will. Yeah, High State's going to lose a ton of players this year. Um, Kyle, did we get any recruiting based? I oh sorry, uh, ad break. You totally blew past the second ad break. That's it on the defense. Um, if you want to listen to this show ad free, you can subscribe at patreon.thesloopcast.com. If you want to come, come hang out with us in a digital fashion, Kyle and I are both very active in the Sloopcast Discord server. You can find that at discord.thesloopcast.com. Here is the last ad break now. And we're back. Um, yeah, the... Were there any Ask Sloopcast questions from a recruiting standpoint that you wanted to handle, or are we good to start wrapping this? Uh, from a recruiting standpoint, uh, oh, will will David will if if uh, David Saunders does commit to Ohio State, will will he start at the offense at one of the offensive tackle positions? I'm going to assume the right. Uh, in for Ohio State in 2025. That's tough, man. Um, that's that's real tough. That's to start as a true freshman at offensive tackle is incredibly difficult. Um, we'll see. I mean, I I I I I, I expect Ohio State to get the four guys and then probably reach into the portal to try and find an, uh, an experienced offensive tackle. Uh, that's how I see the off season playing out. Mm -hmm. uh, I like this, this uh, second question here that we had in light of the Buckeyes getting verbals from a handful of Alabama recruits. Yeah. On a well, scale of only two so far. Yeah. On a scale of how Urban left Florida is how Urban left Ohio State. How did Saban leave Bama? Oh, I mean, I think he left them fine. I mean, it's they're killing it from a recruiting standpoint in Alabama. I, I know that they, they, they are like looking at the, the rankings. They're, I mean, they're second. They're, they're, they're second right now. Yeah, I mean, once they got their revenge on us coming in and grabbing Justin Hill. Um, they did. Like, let let that be. Let that be said. Um, no, they're, I don't think they're hurting at all. And like, if you're expecting a huge drop off from Alabama, you're going to be disappointed. Like, they might. 
like Saban, no one's in the in the modern football era. No one, no one touches Nick Saban as far as just being the best coach. The best college football coach is Nick Saban. Done. Yeah. Period. Over. So I'm not saying that they're going to keep doing Nick Saban things at Alabama. Not what I'm saying. But if you're expecting them to just go away, you're going to be very, no. very sad uh, that that's not going to happen. Yep. I think I think those are all the all the questions we had uh, related to related to recruiting here. OK. Um, I think, I think that's it for the show I just, then. I don't think I was just looking for some just last minute things. See if there's any, anything last minute that come in here. And I think, I think we may be good here. Okay. Um, cool. Do you have anything in Kyle's corner? A lot of, a lot of soccer stuff recently. Anything? A lot in Kyle's of soccer corner? stuff. A lot of Olympic stuff here. I mean, we're wrapping up Copa America and we're wrapping up the Euros here. Uh, the Olympic trials just just finished here. And crew with another yeah, win. Get, crew, crew's on fire. They're on fire right now. They've they scored in their last four games. They are outscoring their opponents last four games. 15 to one. Damn, that's insane. And they're that's an insane number. Home, and they're unbeaten at home in 23 of their last 24 home games. 15 Cruise to one on in fire. 15 to one in four games in soccer is an insane stat. What, what would be what would be the college football equivalent of 15 points to one point in four games? I don't know, scoring like 49 a game and 50 letting points up a game. Yeah, I was thinking 50, like 50 to like to two, seven a game. Yeah, or just like so over a four game stretch, it'd be like 200 to three. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Am I wrong? No. 200 yeah, to seven. The, 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 Olympics are coming up here. I'm, I'm, I know a lot of people don't really care too much for Olympics. I'm a, I'm, I'm a big track and field person. I'm really, really excited to see some of these athletes, some of these athletes run here. I'm really, really excited for the Paris Olympics here. Who's that? Uh, who's that hurdler who you really like? Oh, uh, Sydney. Yes. Yeah, she's yes, she's. <laughs> Whatever event she's going to run, she she's going to win gold. Fair, fair assessment. <laughs> All right, Kyle. Yeah, uh, anything? Um, yeah, I'm I'm really excited. May, may may hear may hear more about it uh, the end of this month and maybe the beginning of August here. So. All right, Kyle. Do you have anything else in Kyle's corner? Uh. Oh shoot! What was his name? Um, I I did. Um, um can I help? <laughs> can I help? No dead air, Kyle. Um, it was. Oh uh, yeah, Trevor. Trevor Bassett. Trevor Bassett. Uh, he's a former. He's a grew, grew up in Northwest Ohio. Uh, grew up in a high school called Bluffton, near really close to my hometown. Made the made the Olympics. Made the Olympics in the uh, four hundred meter hurdles. Uh, went to uh, Ashland University D three school. He, he he finished third in the in the finals in the Olympic trials, the U S Olympic trials, and the four hundred meter hurdles. So hat, hats off to him from just a kid in a small town, heading on over to Paris. Just want to be a big shout out to Trevor. There you go. Little little bit of hometown flavor there. Mm -hmm. Little bit of hometown yep. flavor. Bluffton, Bluffton High School and Ashland University grad. There you go. A little bit of Ohio-based Olympic news. Anything else in Kyle's corner? 
Nope, that's it. We'll we'll, okay. it. we'll 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 end it right there. All right. Um. Yeah. Uh, tonight's ending music will be Courtney from work. Uh, they put out a new lyric music video, so I said, screw it, we'll do that one. Uh, so with all that being said, I'd like to encourage everyone to drink local beer, listen to local music, and of course, support local podcasters. Once again, this is Courtney from work.